Hello again, here we are. We are starting our deep dive with the topic, the mortality of ideas. What does that mean? Well, actually, it's uh, always about, you know, that dream that you have, that you want to revolutionize an, uh, an industry or, um, you know, solve a huge problem that nobody has solved before. And you want to be that pioneer um, to become famous, maybe, you know, to, to uh, be uh, talked about in, in history books in years to come. But it's really something uh, very hard to do because 95% uh, of new products fail. And I'm not talking about uh, the connection or the context of startups now. This is a, a number that comes from all industries. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a huge challenge that we are up against. And it's really um, a big time to, to realize deep down inside that when you're trying to create a new product, you have taken up a challenge that is huge. Here to understand a little bit more, you know, how does it happen that 95% of the products fail? And these are the, the product development phases. So we are now, of course, in the idea generation and screening phase. And um, you can see that most of the ideas get filtered out at that point, but there's still, uh, you know, ideas, um, maybe um, a quarter that gets into business analysis and development and testing and commercialization at the end. And so that means you're spending, uh, you know, a lot of time and, and other resources into developing the product and still ending up only with a few um, that actually make it to the market in a successful way. If you look at these graph that we have seen now, this development um, um, yeah, statistics in numbers, it's uh, even more clear, you know, from 3,000 raw ideas, you will reach to one successful product big challenge for us here in the context um, of our sandbox. So what's the reasons why is this happening? And there is a manifold of reasons coming from uh, the market, of course. Um, a big topic is timing. Are you um, maybe too slow or too early or too fast in terms of what the market is, is ready for. Of course, there's a lot of um, traps that are in the organizational part where you're maybe not able to, um, to plan as well because your team is not gelling as well. Um, underestimated market potential or competition or the response of the competition that was not uh, uh, foreseen in, in that way. A lot of it you can see is about uh, the market and that unique benefit that um, your product provides uh, to your customers. But there's also uh, the whole um, group of, of reasons that are coming from outside or from the technology itself. Now I would like to look back um, and I still remember those products uh, for you, maybe it's a good time to, to look this up. Um, these are products that came out too early. I was called the, the Palm Pilot already in 1997. And, and Apple killed it and put it aside, put it back to the shelf um, because it, the market was not ready yet. But this product, of course, helped uh, Apple a lot to, uh, to create uh, the iPhone later on. So, Product failures or, you know, cases where you have to withdraw from the market are something that are helping you in the long run. My favorite example here is Ferdinand Porsche and not many people know about this. He has already created uh, an electric car. Here, this is the, the mixed hybrid so, so long back. And, um, Unfortunately, his, his um, 
technology was was just uh, you know pushed down and uh, there was bigger much bigger market uh, or you know powers uh, acting um, around you know coming from the oil industry so that he was not able to to go anywhere and it took us um, yeah several decades uh, to come to the point that we have electric cars and hybrid cars on our roads today still not um, in their quantities that we should have but uh, this is actually I think a very sad part to realize that um, it's not about the technology you have and the, the, the impact or the the benefit the, ma the massive positive uh, impact that a technology brings but it's about uh, the driving forces on a market if that technology is adopted. There's another case from, from Xerox actually. Um, they were the ones that invented the graphical user interface with icons and folders as we know it uh, um, today. And uh, Apple uh, basically uh, copied uh, these ideas from them on a, on a visit when, when they, uh, yeah, some, some uh, people just went to, to visit the company and found out about that. So, uh, um, there is a lot of unfairness um, in um, anything you develop where you're actually really a pioneer, where you are too early um, for, uh, for the masses, too, too early on the market. And it's uh, yeah, very, very, very difficult to, um, to recognize that and to still be able to uh, benefit and to be able to survive as well as, as a company um, when you're too early with ideas. I think that's my last example here from Compaq. They actually designed the, the first music player that was actually uh, used out there and um, also not successful too early with, with that technology. Um, the iPod made it in the end, as we know that. So thank you for listening to understand really that challenge we're up against. And this is not about having the best, the best technology. Um, yeah, really let that sink into you. And now I want to um, encourage you to uh, uh, take a pen and paper and write down your questions that um, came up now in the context of your idea yeah, you're relating this to. Um, doesn't have to be, of course, a physical pen and paper. It can also be a digital razor, but please write down your thoughts um, to discuss them with your team and also to uh, take them up later with other materials. Thank you.